13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. Miller Milkis, Miller Milkis Boyette, Miller Boyette, Miller Boyette Warren. Whatever name you knew them by, they were the production company that defined the face of television comedy for three decades through hits like, uh, okay, well, no one's perfect. Oh, we get the point, all right? Anyway, in the late 90s, this production company would get caught up in events that would lead to the creation of what just might be the worst sitcom in modern history. Uh, no, 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 trust me, it's worse. Tomorrow, you'll say TGIF when Full House is their season premiere, Lost in Paradise. The play, the play. Then the comedy. Our family. road to hell starts with ABC's family friendly TGIF programming block, which was almost single handedly carried through the years by Miller Boyette with their smash hits Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, Full House, and Step by Step. When Disney bought ABC in 1995, it started making changes in the network's programming to make the network over in its own image. TGIF started shifting from family-friendly to aimed at teens. Les Moonves, the newly arrived head of programming at CBS, saw what he thought was an opportunity to end ABC's domination on Fridays by outright stealing the idea that they were slowly abandoning. Moonves would turn CBS Friday nights not just into a TGIF clone, but essentially TGIF itself. Moonves cut a $40 million deal with Miller Boyette to bring their two remaining TGIF shows, Family Matters and Step by Step, over to CBS as the anchors for the CBS Friday night block party. And to sweeten the deal, he gave them the freedom to create a third show for the block. The result was Miko. Now, it's uncertain who was supposed to be the main star of Miko. Some say that it was intended from the beginning to be a vehicle for then seven year old Jonathan Lipnicki, who had played the precocious Renee Zellweiger spawn in Jerry Maguire. Others insist that it was developed specifically for Bronson Pin's show would become famous playing Balky in Miller Boyette's Perfect Strangers. Either way, the two of them wound up essentially being the comic duo around which the show was built. Oh, you speak English? What's your name? I'm Alex. I'm a Sparkle. Who are you? I'm Migo from the planet Marmadon 4.0. Okie dokie, Migo. For the concept, Miller Boyette dusted off the magical nanny trope that they had tried two decades before and failed with Out of the Blue. Pinchot would play Migo, an alien whose ship crash lands on Earth and accidentally finds himself hired as caretaker to Lipnicki's Alex Parker. You're quiet. Do you cry when you're sad? No, people on Mamazan 4.0 are not allowed to cry. Sister Maggie, played by a pre-buffy Michelle Trachtenberg. I dream about your seductive, knowing smile, your piercing soulful eyes, and your heart-stopping womanly form. You share a locker with Michelle Pfeiffer? No, this letter is addressed to me. Isn't it romantic? I hope it's from somebody I invited to my Halloween party. Well, perhaps I could help you figure out who it is from. Really? Mm -hmm. I can do a complete analysis of the note. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you find out? Uh, this letter is from a person who is highly intelligent, sensitive, not too tall, and who has a sweet spot for a certain foxy 12-year-old girl. So who is it? Either a boy in your class or Woody Allen. <laughs> and Brother Tripp, Played by a pre-complete savages, Eric Von Detten. Not just any girl. Oh, you are a goddess. Nice set of legs, too. 
Who are you? I'm Migo from the planet Marmazan 4.0. Yeah, and I'm Batman. <laughs> nice to meet you, Batman. Anyway, I'll... All right, look, buddy, I'm not buying this whole alien thing, okay? If you really are from this Marmazan 4.0 place, how can you speak English? Well, it's not like I'm from Mars. <laughs> Rounding out the family was Ed Begley Jr. as family patriarch Hi. Edward. Oh, good morning, Dr. Edward. Good morning, Daddy. Let me pour your liquid caffeine. <laughs> Thanks, Migo. Hey, if you're not doing anything this weekend, I'm having a couple of the young doctors over. Maybe you want to join us for a little poker? I would love to. Will we be poking each other with our fingers, or would you like me to bring some fireplace tools? <laughs> Hoping to hide the fact that they brought an alien into their house, Alex and Tripp came up with a supposedly a more believable explanation for Migo's eccentricities. Tripp, why did you tell the large male with yellow hair that I'm from Canada? <laughs> well, have you ever seen E.T.? No. Okay, well, it's a movie about a cute alien who gets stranded on Earth, and the kids want to keep him, but the adults want to cut open his head and look at his brains. <laughs> okay, I'm from Canada. I got it. I got it. Yeah, typical sitcom. You're invited to the biggest party on television. Welcome to the CBS Friday Night Block Party. Four great shows. Family Matters, Migo, Gregory Hines, and Step by Step. <laughs> Is this guy for real? No. What a party! Dad, sometimes you are so strange. You won't find laughs like this anywhere else. I'm the party. <laughs> the CBS Friday Night Block Party premieres September 19th. Oh yes, talented cast, a more than proven lead-in, the kings of sitcoms as the producers. Miko was poised to become a huge hit. It did not. So, what happened? Well, trouble for the show started even before it hit the air. Focus groups didn't care much for Von Detten's portrayal of Trip, so the decision was made to replace him with a very pre-Blue Bloods Will Estes. Trip. Why is there a sign in the front yard that says this house quarantined due to very gnarly disease? I didn't know how to spell Ebola. You didn't know how to spell house either. However, neither the network nor Miller Boyette seemed to want to pony up the money for the extensive reshoots it would have taken to replace Von Detten with Estes and the pilot. So the show wound up going through Darren Stevens syndrome after just one episode. Next, for some reason that surpasseth human understanding, after 22 years of producing single-camera sitcoms on film, Miller and Boyette inexplicably decided to shoot Miko on videotape. As a result, the few special effects the show used had a tendency to look even more low-budget than they actually were. The lower picture quality also made Miko stand out between Family Matters and CBS produced The Gregory Hines Show, both of which were shot on film. It stood out for all the wrong reasons. Now add to that the fact that the scripts were juvenile, relying on cheap jokes and seemingly aimed at young kids instead of the fun for the whole family ethos behind TGF and Block Party. The result, you have a show that would be more at home in first-run syndication in the afternoons or weekends, yeah, like that, than it was in an 8.30 p.m. Friday night on a major network. In fact, Variety said that Miko was a Saturday morning show in a Friday night time slot. The final nail in the coffin was the show's competition, where Family Matters and Step by Step were on their way down the ratings ladder before they switched networks, the rest of the new TGIF lineup were going strong, and Miko was scheduled directly against Boy Meets World, which was having the best ratings of its run so far that season. 13 episodes had been ordered and produced, but CBS's patience couldn't hold out that long. The plug was pulled after episode 6 aired on October 24th. 
CBS filled Miko's time slot for the rest of 1997 with holiday specials, waiting until January to actually launch a replacement show. This should have served as an omen of things to come for the Friday night block party. On January 30th, CBS canceled Family Matters, deciding to burn off the remaining episodes in the summer. The axe then fell for both The Gregory Hines Show and Step by Step on February 27th. Step by Step's four remaining episodes were burned off in June, but the last seven episodes of The Gregory Hines Show were scrapped. Eventually, CBS announced the end of the Friday Night Block Party altogether. Starting the following season, CBS would program hour-long dramas on Friday. Oddly enough, even though the block party was a failure, it managed to achieve Moonves's goal of breaking ABC's monopoly on Fridays. The fracturing of the Friday Night Family audience did enough damage to ABC's TGIF that within two years, ABC would also abandon the concept, paving the way for CBS's dramas to win the night for several seasons to come. So in the end, CBS's Friday Night Block Party served its purpose and CBS won the war for Friday, but it was a Pyrrhic victory. And in the end, it was Miko that lit the fuse on the bomb that blew up Friday night family programming.